Hi, and welcome to a tutorial on how to make rain in Maya. Before we get started, I'd like to credit Michelle Fromm who helped me with this tutorial. She's an animator and she did all the animation for this steer. So if you're into animation, you should definitely check out her page. I put the link under the video so you can just click that once you watch the tutorial or now if you're into cool animation. Right, so before we start, we want to check out our Maya settings. It's important when we work with particles that it plays back every frame when we press play because otherwise our particles are not going to evaluate correctly. And also we want to set a max playback speed of 24 frames a second, otherwise it's just going to go nuts if you have a fast computer and play way too fast. So we want it real time if we can as a max speed. Right, so now we're ready to create an emitter a particle emitter. So go to your particles tab under dynamics and uh, create an emitter. Now we want to set the emitter type to a volume and that's because we want the particles to emit from a volume instead of uh, a point in space because we imagine it's a, probably a cloud that where the rain comes from, right? I don't know. Create and uh, you'll see you get uh, an emitter and a particle node. So let's grab the emitter and drag it above the deer. Now if I press play you'll see some particles starting to appear from the point that is the emitter. By default they exist forever in the scene and eventually you'll have a lot of particles. So let's go in and change the lifetime of those particles so that they die out over time. And you can set it to constant and underneath you can type in the length in seconds. So I'm just going to give it a length of a lifetime of two seconds, lifespan if you will. And of course the bigger number you type in the longer the particle is going to live. So if you see that your rain is um, falling through the floor and into infinity you might want to reduce the number or if it doesn't reach the ground at all uh, it, you might want to increase the lifetime so that it doesn't disappear before it hits the ground. There you go, pro tip right there. Right, if you want to tweak the other settings of the emitter, you can go to the um, channel box and you can see that there's rate, where you can change how many particles are being emitted per second, and some other fancy features that you can play around with once you have it set up. I'm just going to start out and scale the, um, the emitter so that it sort of emits around the area where the deer is standing. So you can see now the particles are being emitted from within that box but they kind of stay in the air. So what we want to do is we want to go to fields and create a gravity field. And I'm just going to change the magnitude of that gravity field. It depends on the scale of your scene, so you need to test that out yourself and see what matches your scene. Right. Now we have the rain falling and the deer is trying to get away because it knows that simulating fur and water together is really expensive, so he needs to get out of there. Now if we go to the outline and click our particle, we can go and tweak the look of this. So under the render attributes, you can go and set the particle render type to streak. And this is going to give us something that looks more like rain. Now this is not my final solution. This is not what I used in um, the video you saw in the beginning of the tutorial. I'm going to get to that soon. But if you want, you can do this very simple setup where you go and adjust these values. And so that it looks sort of like motion blur. And uh, so now it sort of looks like rain penetrating the deer. And we don't want that. So click your particle and your deer or your model and go to particles and make collide. And I'm going to do the same for the ground plane, make collide. So now when I play this back, you can see the rain is going to come down and it's going to hit the collision object and bounce right off. Now, of course, this is uh, not natural, <laughs> so we are going to, first of all, let's make something happen once the particle hits the collision object. So in order to do this, go to your particle tab and click the particle collision event editor. Now, in here we can create an event which happens when the particle hits the collision object. And so you can give it a name. I'm just going to give it a random name just for the for whatever reason. And then we can go down here and click on the type 
emit. We want it to emit, and we want it to emit, say, five particles. So the raindrop splits into five particles. I'm just gonna check off the original particle dies, which means it disappears once it hits the object. Inherit velocity, I'm just gonna set that to something less so that it doesn't explode and fly off into space. If we go to the geometry, you can also see there's a geo connector tap. And in here you can change the um, resilience of the object. So I'm just gonna leave it like this, but uh, if you set it to zero, you can see that the particle is not going to bounce off the collision object in the same way it does now. Okay, so let's create this. And you'll see we get a new particle node in the outliner and that is our uh, extra particles that are being emitted once the old one dies. So if we play this back, you can see that the big particle turns into smaller particles that then bounce off because of the resilience and flies into space. This is wrong. So let's click the new particle, go to the fields tab and create a gravity field for that particle system. I'm just going to set the magnitude to something that fits my scene. And so if we play this back again, we can see that the particles get emitted once they hit an object and they fall to the ground again. Now just to break it up a bit, I'm going to add a turbulence field so that we don't get uniform raindrops falling in the exact same place. And you do that from the fields tab again, just click your particle and then go to fields and create a turbulence field. Now the rain as it is now is pretty easy to render out. You can just go to the um, render settings and use Maya hardware for rendering. And if we go in here and check off the enable geometry mask, the geometry is not going to render, but the particle is. So we can uh, comp it together later and give the rain the color you want. You can also use, uh, let's see, Mansell Ray. And if we render this now, there's different ways of doing this. Uh, before we go on to, I'm going to show you how to do a shaded raindrop with an actual water shader on. But uh, just because we can, I'm going to show you how to color the particle real quick. And you do that by selecting the particle emitter, add dynamic attributes, uh, color. And now you get this pop-up box where you can set it to add per object attribute or per particle uh, attribute. So if I click OK, we can go up here and change the RGB channels. I can make this green, really green. But um, again, you could do that in comp, so what's the point, right? Nope, instead change the particle emitter type to spheres and click OK. So if we do this, we get small sphere instances that we can add a shader to. And you can change the radius of that with the slider here. I'm going to do the same with the secondary particle system. And I'm going to make those spheres a little smaller than uh, the big ones. So the raindrop falls and splits into smaller objects. Now I'm going to make a really beautiful water shader out of this blin. Let's see. Fairly glossy. And... <laughs> I never use the uh, Maya shaders. Great. So now I assigned the uh, the water shader to our particle system. But wait, don't render yet. We need to just make sure that our particles are cached because if we're going to render with motion blur, we need to make sure that the particles have a fixed position or that they have been calculated so that Maya doesn't screw things up. So go to your uh, solvers tab and click on Create Particle Disk Cache. Then we'll get this menu and we can go click on Cache Everything. And it's going to run through your timeline and cache out the particles. And the great thing about this is that it's more stable and Maya doesn't have to calculate particles every time you move the timeline cursor. So cache out once you have all your particle behavior down and working, then yeah, it'll save you some trouble and Maya too. Uh, let's try and render this out with uh, Mental Ray and make sure to go and check on your um, motion blur in Mental Ray so that you get the streak from the water drop. 
so if we render this, you can see that, yeah, you know, it's getting there. Obviously, the particles uh, have streaks here in the middle, but uh, at the top where they just spawned, they haven't gained any velocity yet, so they don't have any motion blur on them. So you want to place the emitter out of frame if you want it to really look like rain. Uh, but enough from Captain Obvious. Uh, let's uh, let's see what it looks like again. I guess it's now a rain deer, and he's all like, "Heck no!" That's it. That's particles. Go use it for something. And by the way, I'm always interested in other people's work, so if you do something with this, uh, send me a link, and I'd like to see what you actually came up with.